Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss about decision tree classifiers. Before we into the issue of a classifier, let us first learn what is a decision tree. I have taken an example. Uh, suppose this is a decision tree used by a clinician to decide upon breast cancer. Let us understand how this tree work for a clinician. In this tree, each node, suppose this is one node, it is get divided in two part, two paths. So, it is a binary tree. And at every node, we are asking a question and that question has some yes, no answer. So, at the root of this tree, at the topmost node, suppose a person comes to clinic after doing self-examination and the clinician asks this question. The lump detected by self-examination, has, ha, ha, has the person detected the lump by self-examination or not? That is the question the clinician asks. So, if the person has detected the lump in breast by self-examination, then clinician follow this path because it is for yes and the clinician decide to go for mammogram. If the lump was not detected by the person by self-examination, then she will be recommended to do a self-examination maybe after one month. Now, look at this note. In this case, the clinician has recommended for a rec mammogram and the mammogram has come, re report has come. Now, the clinician asks the question, is the mammogram suspicious? If it is not suspicious, then the clinician will decide, okay, we do not need any biopsy. The story ends there. If the mammogram is suspicious, that means we are following this yes arm of the tree, then the clinician will go for biopsy. And the clinician now will ask, does the biopsy show malignancy? If it does not show malignancy, then the clinician will follow this path, this arm of the tree and it will decide that this lump is nothing but a non-malignant cyst. Whereas, if the biopsy report shows malignancy, that means this yes is correct, then the clinician will follow this path and will decide that the lump that is detected in the breast is a malignant tumor. So, this is a decision tree, it is a binary tree and it is made of nodes and edges. At each every node, you are asking a question and that question has yes, no answer. In decision tree classifier, we will use this type of binary tree to classify data. So, let us learn how we do that, right. So, let us look into a data uh, and the uh, decision tree that I have built based on that data. Now, remember this data is a training data set. So, here is my uh, decision tree that I have built using this training data. Here, suppose you can say there are two predictors, G1 and uh, uh, G2, you can imagine them, these are two genes which are marker for stem cell and I may have two classes, class 2 is uh, uh, stem cell and class 1 may be no stem cell. So, the data distribution you can see, there is some amount of patchy region, but there is also diffused uh, region also. Now, based on this training set, I have created this decision tree. This decision tree you can see is a binary because at every node there is a question asked and there is a yes no answer and we are following this yes or no path. Now, before I go into details that how I build this tree, the algorithm, let us see how I can use this tree classifier to classify a test data. So, I have a test data here, the red dot and its values are suppose G1 is 3, G2 is 2.5. So, how should you use the decision tree classifier? I will take this data at the initial node, the root. So, I have taken there. Now, I am. I will check the first node, the first question. What is the first question? Is G2 less equal to 3? Okay. G2 is 2.5. So, it is less equal to 3. So, I will follow this yes path. I have marked that by red. Now, I am in this node, the pink colored one. A new question is asked in this node, is G, G1 less equal to 4? 
Okay, let me check G1. G1 is 3, so that means it is less equal to 4. So again, yes. So I'll follow this yes path. Again, I marked it by red. So I land up in a node which tells that this node tells me that this test data point is class 1. So this is class 1. So I have classified the test data. In this way, you can take hundreds of test data and classify them. Now, I will move into how actually I build this uh, uh, decision tree classifier. But before that, uh, some technical terms let us uh, get acquainted with. The topmost uh, node is called the root, whereas the lowest one, where already we have made the decision about the class, will be called uh, terminal nodes and leaves. And you can see from this terminal node, there is no more arrows, right? There is no more arrows because we are not asking any question there. We have already made the decision about the class. So those are the leaves and these are the in-between nodes where we ask questions to make decision are called internal node or simply sometimes people will call node. Now let us look into how this decision tree a classifier is built using a training data set. So I have the training data set shown here and I want to build this one. How should I proceed? Okay. The first step. Take all your data initially in the root node. So what is my initial data? This is my initial training data. I have 40 data points, the pink color one, the class one, and there are 68 data points for class two. I have taken all those in the root node. Now I have to ask a question. What type of question? Like for example, is G1 equal to one? Is G1 bigger than 3? Something like that, a logic operation, right? And which will have a yes no answer. And I will ask the question in such a way that from a heterogeneous population, by giving this yes no answer, I get more homogeneous subset of data. Let me explain again. I have a heterogeneous data here 40 pink, uh, 68 blue. Now I want to ask question in such a way by giving yes no answer I should get more purer or homogeneous subset in these two places, in these two child nodes. So the question that has been asked in my model and my, my tree is G2 less equal to 3? Then what does that mean? Actually what I get, I have shown it visually here, this question divide my data in two part, right? So the below one this one is yes, right? In this region, in the below region of the, in the in below this uh, yellow line, all data, brown line, all data are satisfying that G2 is less equal to 3. So all those data will come here in this child node. So that's why I have 38 pink, 21 blue. Blue is for class 2. Now, look into the rest of the data. Rest of the data is from here. And you can easily see there is only two pink dots and rest of the data are class 2, blue one. So that means by asking this question, asking this question, I have separated the data in more purer subset. Obviously now I have a subset of data which is purer than the original one. But how do I measure purity? I will come to that. There are certain mathematical measures of purity that uh, uh, is used to divide this data and to uh, test which question I should ask. I will come to them later on. But now let us pause proceed. Suppose we know that uh, uh, measure of purity. And if you look into this node, this child node here, you can easily see or you can focus on this part. You can easily see it is largely homogeneous, right? It is mostly the blue colored dots, the class 2 thing. So the classifier decides to stop there and say this is class 2. So all this region is class 2. Now I will work this on this, the algorithm will work on this child node. What it will do? Here it will ask another new question. Just like is G3, uh, G2 greater than 4? G1 less than 2, something like that. And the algorithm will try to ask the question that will create more purer subpopulation or subset of data. And in this case, the algorithm has decided to ask the question, is G1 less equal to 4? 
let us look into visualize that. So, here remember we are not dividing the whole data set right, we are dividing only the data set which is in this region. So, that means at that node the algorithm is working locally not on the whole data that is very important I will come back to that. So, here in this data set this box I have how many 38 uh, pink and 21 blue. So, now the question G1 is less equal to 4 is dividing this data into two regions this one and this one shown by this yellow line and doing so you can easily see this part is largely blue whereas this part is largely pink. That means now I have got two subpopulation, two subset which are much purer than the previous situation. So, now I have 1 pink and 18 plus 2 data points on that child node whereas, this one has 37 pink or class 1 and 3 class 2. So, I have got relatively more purer subpopulation and as they are largely pure the algorithm decides to stop here, stop here and call this as class 2, this as class 1. That means, this is class 2, this is class 1, this one earlier it has decided this is class 2. We are done. There is no more uh, data left to classify. We have reached the uh, leaves right or the terminal nodes. So, the classifier stops there. Now, you can use a test data to classify the test data. So, one crucial aspect of decision tree classifier is that at every node it make a decision, it asks a question. Now, remember it can ask large number of question, n number of question to divide this whole space of in the data in multiple two, in two part, two segments, which question it should ask. As I said, it will ask a question which gives me more pure subset of samples, right. Now, multiple question suppose three different question can give me a more pure data set with respect to the original data set. So, that means I have to compare between the outcome of all these three questions. So, I need some measure, some measure for purity of data in a particular segment, particular subset, particular region and there are two uh, uh, such measure that I will discuss in this lecture. One is very common is called Gini index. What is Gini index? So, suppose uh, let me uh, draw this is suppose the whole data space and I have divided in uh, this this way four uh, division I have divided and this is suppose the mth part and I have some uh, data points here right. Some of them are class 1, some of them are class 2 something like that. So, fmj, fmj is a fraction of observation of class j. Suppose we have two class, so class 1 or class 2, j is 1 or 2 in this mth segment, in this mth region, right. So, there is a fraction of the data, whole data which is present in m segment and uh, belong to the class j. So, it is fmj. So, Gini index for this segment, Gini index of m is equal to fmj into 1 minus fmj and it is sum over all the classes. That is why j equal to 1 to k, suppose I have k classes. In the previous example, I had two classes, so it will be k will be equal to 2. Now, let us see uh, what is the Gini index for our uh, classification, uh, classification tree. Before I go there, let me show some numerical way the properties of this Gini index. So, what I have done here, suppose I have again uh, this one, let me draw, uh, I have four segment, this is the mth uh, segment and there suppose class 1, there is no class 1 data point, all the data point are class 2. So, the fraction f for class 2 is 1 and if you calculate the Gini index for this, it will be 0. So, here. So, that means in this segment, in this region of the data, we have pure class 2. Whereas, if all the data point there is of class 1, there is not a single class 2 data point, then also Gini index will be 0. So, that is pure class 1. 
let us see in between. Okay, suppose in this segment oh, oh, both class 1 and class 2 are present in equal amount 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then I have the maximum value of Gini index. So, you can see as the population become more heterogeneous, Gini index increases and then as it becomes more pure, it becomes low and low. So, both sides of this maximum you have more pure and pure or sample, so you have low Gini index. So, as I said, we will do the calculation for uh, our uh, tree. So, I have shown for one part, initial data, all the data taken here at the root node, Gini index is 0.47. Whereas, after I ask the first question and segment the data in two part, in this where we have the, got the no answer, you can see Gini index is so low, 0 0.07. So, that means that question, the first question of the root node has divided the data in and created one subset which is very pure. That is why the Gini index is 0 0.07 and that is why the classifier has decided to stop there and call the class and it has called the class as class 2 because a predominantly majority of those data points are of class 2, the blue one. Now, there is another uh, similar uh, parameter which is used to measure a uh, purity of data set that is called entropy. And again, the same way, fmj is the fraction of observation of class j in the mth region, the same definition. The only thing is the formula is changed. So, the entropy, entropy of that mth region, you have divided in multiple region the data set, is equal to summation of fmj log fmj, I have taken the base as 2, so the entropy will be unit will be bit. And if you look into the behavior of entropy, right? it also has this behavior. When I have pure population, I have entropy 0, least entropy. As the population becomes more heterogeneous mixed type, the entropy increases and peaks at 0.5, when both the population of class 1 and class 2 are in equal amount. So, it is also behaving just like the Gini index. So, now here I have shown the uh, calculation for entropy in case of our first splitting. So, here entropy is very high because at the root node we have taken the hetero whole heterogeneous population data and in the class 2 which I have got by this no answer has a lower entropy 0.24. Now, let me remind you that what is happening at each node. For example, this is a decision node though it is a root node. Here again is this is a decision node. In this decision node, we are asking a question, right? To get a pure, uh, to you know, to purely get pure, pure subsets of data. Now, as I said earlier, I can ask n number of questions. So that means I have to compare between the outcome of multiple questions. To compare these outcomes, what usually we use is called information gain. Let me explain it. So in this case, we have asked the question whether G two whether G2 is less equal to 3 or not. So, I will check what is the information gain by this question. Okay, the formula of information gain is, you take the entropy of the parent node. What is the parent node here? This one is the parent node. And these are the child node. We have two childs. It is a binary tree. So, entropy of the parent node minus entropy of the first child node minus entropy of the second child node, but you do not take the raw value of the entropies of child nodes, you multiply them with some weights, right? These are the weights. What are the weights? For the child node 1, you take the ratio of fraction of data point in that node, in this child node, divided by total number of data points. Similarly, you multiply the entropy of the second child node with the fraction of the number of data point in that child node divided by total number of data points. So, let me do the calculation. So, what we have? We have uh, rather than taking fraction what I have done here, I have taken the original number that does not make any change in calculation, only the numerical values are different. So, my parent node's entropy is 0.95, here it is written. The entropy of one child node is 0 0.94, the other one is 0 0.24 and I have multiplied by this weight and the weight here, 
for the second one weight is 49 divided by 108 because I have 49 number data points here 47 plus 2 is 49 and here I have 108 data point originally. So, this weight is nothing but the 49 divided by 108 similarly this weight is 59 divided by 108. So, it is simple you are just uh, multiplying with the relative weight of each of this child node depending upon how many data points are there in these two segments. So, now uh, do the calculation you will get 0.33. So, now suppose you ask another question in place of this g2 less equal to 3 you ask an alternate question suppose you say okay uh, g2 is bigger than 4 then you do the same calculation again and check out what is the information gain and if the information gain for this question is less than the information gain of this question I will keep the previous question because in that case we have got more information that means we have got better segregation of heterogeneous population into more homogeneous subpopulation. So, now look into some lacunae or trouble with this approach that we are using. As I said earlier what we are doing in this method this algorithm we are working locally. So, suppose in our example what we have done this is my data space we divided the data first in two part and in the second question we work only on this segment not on the whole data. So, essentially the algorithm is deciding locally on the one segment of the data and it is not deciding the fate based on the whole data throughout the pro algorithm throughout the process throughout the steps. So, that means that is why this algorithm creates a tree which is actually overfitted. So, as you remember we have discussed the problem of overfitting earlier also. So, it has a low bias that means it fits very well with the training data set that you have given. So, it has a low bias whereas, it will, as it is low bias and overfitted it will have high variance. That means, if I have a completely new test set right it may not predict it properly in that case for those test samples. So, it will have uh, less predictive capability. So, it has high variance. Now, this is not a unique problem for our uh, decision tree classifier. This problem is there in most of the machine learning algorithms and there are ways to reduce this problem. For example, in case of decision tree classifier we usually use two approach. One is called uh, boosting another one is called bagging. Bagging is nothing but bootstrap aggregating. So, you will first bootstrap and then you will aggregate the data and one of the example one of the algorithm uh, which use bagging in decision tree, tree classifier is random forest and I will briefly discuss that. The principle of drawing the algorithm tree will be same, but we will change it a bit uh, how we build the tree. So, what you do here suppose this whole square is a whole data set. So, the first step is bootstrapping. In bootstrapping you do not take the whole training data set to train your machine learning algorithm. You do not do that. What you do? You divide this data into multiple training data set. So, from one large training data set you create some subsets and you create those subsets by uh, sampling with replacement. Right? So, that is what I have shown here d 1, d 2, d 3, d 4 these are the subsets of the training data set. Now, you take one of those subset data and create a decision tree. Now, when you are creating this decision tree again you are not taking all the predictors. Suppose in your training data set there are 10 predictors or 10 uh, independent variable on which the dependent variable or the response variable depends. Right? So, x 1, x 2, x 3 something like that up to x 10. So, when you are building this first tree you will not take all the predictor information for that data d 1 you will select a part of them suppose uh, two third of those predictors. Right? Similarly, you now take uh, data subset 2 and create the tree 2. Now, again you do not take all the predictor you take a subset of those predictors. So, in this way I have shown 5 trees you can make hundreds of such trees and every case you are choosing you know jumbling up the which pa parameters or which predictor you will choose to build this uh, tree. So, in this way what you have done okay, 
may be you have uh, 20 or 30 predictor in your whole data, but none of these three use all those predictor together. So, in technical term these trees are generated from bootstrap data because you have to use a uh, subs uh, subset of your data as well as they are decorrelated because you have not used all the predictor. You have used m number of predictor out of this total number of p the total number of predictor that you have used. So, this is how you create the forest, forest of decision tree. So, now you have to use this forest to classify a test data. So, that is where the aggregation part come of bagging, right. So, you have a test uh, data unknown sample, you do not know the class of that. So, you feed that to each of this tree and each of this tree will classify the data. So, suppose it say the tree 1 has said it is class 1, the tree 2 has said it is class 2, tree 3 has said it is class 2, 4 has said also class 2, 5 has also said class 2. Now, you will aggregate these decisions made by these multiple decision tree and you will use the principle of majority vote to decide the class of the test data. In this example, five out of 5 these trees, 4 have said these data belong to class 2, whereas 1 tree has said it belongs to class 1, that is minority. So, I will say my test data belong to class 2. So, that is how we build a random forest and we use it to classify our data. That is all for uh, this lecture. Let me uh, jot down uh, what we have learned in this lecture. We have learned about you know decision trees which are, are used for classification and these trees are binary tree. What we are doing here, we are in this uh, tree at every decision node, we are dividing the data, we are splitting it to subset to create some pure subsets. Now, when I say pure subset, I need some measure of purity, right. That is why we have uh, learned about two measures of purity. One is called Gini index and the one is called entropy. And at every decision node, I can ask multiple question and I have to choose which question suits best for my, uh, my tree. And so, these uh, questions and their outcomes are compared using what we call information gain and we have discuss that also. Then we have discussed that this decision tree works locally. So, it is a greedy algorithm and it usually becomes overfitted. So, we have to be very careful that decision tree classifier can be overfitted. So, they may have less predictive capability. To solve this problem, there are method using boosting and uh, bagging. One of the bagging technique that we have learned is the random forest technique. That is all for this uh, lecture. See you in the next one.